this is technically our second installment of the what do we call this the trading foundation okay. series of school and games and if you guys haven't figured out the, the purpose of this series is really just to give you a piece by piece digestible like foundation to trading price action we've gone through the very raw price action already and that was with the strat and og and we got a lot of good feedback there so i'm glad you guys are picking that up and then we did a quick debrief on the same thing you know when we started this off it was that the strat and price action is is the foundation it's the beginning step one and it's it's critical to build off of that in terms of, and that was like candlesticks and things like that the next piece that is equally critical in my mind is just is what we call market structure and uh, in in one of the notes earlier it was like you know we're we're in the market and if you're new to trading you're looking at all these things going up down left right you really like it just looks like randomness total randomness the truth is that it's it's something called chaos theory there's also something called efficient market theory there's a lot of stuff in there but what i wanted to do was just the introduction to what market structure looks like and the reason that's important is like if you see our trades we're getting in at you know lower highs and we're exiting you know we're getting in short at lower highs and we're exiting on higher lows and and your pnl that way is probably double what a standard retail trading system would give you and it, you cannot see that unless you understand market structure very basic market structure and so you know of all the traders in discord and i thought it would be good to bring uh bruce in because he is actually from discord you guys might not know this guy but <laughs> from a very technical quiet. perspective dude this guy is insane i don't think i've ever seen have you even lost a trade uh yeah I've definitely lost a trade i think every no. trader's lost a trade i want now. <laughs> i mean okay well at least maybe he lost a personal trade but i uh you know in the last few months dude i don't know so uh bruce comes from the cryptoverse i call it the cryptoverse uh but i wanted to bring this guy in because i swear i've never seen anything like this kind of ta people play with like basic market structure and you see these fancy things like wave theory which he can totally go into and i think we will touch on um the initial piece of market structure uh do you know how to pronounce this is it week off why i call Wyckoff. i don't know if that's accurate or not that's where in discord you'll see a lot of people talk about supply and demand trading it's actually this and it's not new so don't believe anybody that says they made it up that's that's bs right none of this is new but what is real is that it's it's the way that you trade it. And there's some very specific nuances within that, that I really couldn't think of anybody better. Bruce, do you want to give them like a quick intro, what your background is, and maybe like a little bit of your trade cell and where, why, why cost specifically is important to you and what, what made you kind of. I'll give you like a backstory. Early 2017, the crypto started coming up, Bitcoin, all that stuff. So I said, ah, screw it, I'll buy one. Bought one. And then I started to, uh, my, one of my buddies got me into, uh, Todd, he's my mentor, and he teaches Wyckoff. He's really big on Wyckoff, Wyckoff, Wyckoff. This guy too, he is 60 years old, no kids, him and his wife, all they do is trade. That's their life. So I was like, this is a good mentor to pick. I started learning my stuff through him. He taught me pretty much everything that I know. By learning from learning Wyckoff, I just, I knew that like supply and demand, that's just trading period. That's everything. Stocks, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Supply and demand. That's just market structure in anything. And that's how I knew that Wyckoff's one of the ones I wanted to study. And he also taught Elliott Wave, which Elliott Wave, it works with Wyckoff hand in hand. So awesome, man. So I'm just going to kind of move forward. I have, so the first slides I have are kind of like the Wyckoff schematics. You can earmuffs, whatever. But before we get started, just to remind everyone, carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you, considering your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. So Wyckoff, the this guy, he was, what was he known as? He was like the- what, Richard D. Wyckoff, like, the creator. It started like early 1900s, dude, right when the stock market yeah. like came out. That's- Like way Wyckoff. back. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is like the the beginning, right? Yeah, so yeah. There was yeah. Wyckoff, <laughs> there was Dow, and there's, uh, who else was there? I mean, Livermore, I'm pretty sure is, well, it has to be one of them. Yeah, but this guy was basically one of the, the original 
people that came up yeah. with technical Bruce analysis. And all that stuff. Here's my question. And I'm going to talk to, to Bruce, you guys, as if like, I'm a, I'm a noob, right? So like he sent me a couple screenshots and I'm looking at some of these things and I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is, if you were to Google it, right? What does it look like? This is one of the schematics that comes up. My real question. So like this, this stuff right here is what it teaches. And if you're watching some of our trading, my trading, probably Bruce's trading too. There, there's all these like patterns and things like that, that show up in stock charts. And I think one of the biggest problems newer traders have is that they don't know exactly when to get in, right? We went through candlesticks and stuff. We taught everybody candlestick mm -hmm. patterns and what that looks like from a very raw price action. The thing is when you get into a sustained move, and especially if you're trading options, uh, and, and Bruce trades a lot of futures, uh, crypto futures. Yeah. You know, those sustained moves, those are the ones that you really want. The strat will teach you actually give you the ability to trade each one of these things inside. But I think like understanding what the accumulation distribution model, it, that's what it's called. Uh, yeah. Understanding just the whole Y cup itself. Understanding yeah. So like why, why, what stuff. makes a stock do this? Right, like uh, it, just it, the yeah, like the supply and demand, the stuff. distribution, and the uh, accumulation, just buying and selling. That's really what it is when it comes down to. So, like when you are sending your trades, I'm watching everything, and I guess what part of this, if you're new, would you? How would you explain this to someone else? Like, what what should they take out of this? How would I explain? I so in my uh, I would explain like to if you were to try to look at this and say, okay, I needed a put this on a chart and look at it as price section. I would say, first of all, you need to zoom out big time. At least I'd go daily, yeah. weekly, whatever it is to figure yeah. out where, what is the market doing? Is it in an uptrend? Is it in a downtrend? Because if it's an uptrend, then you're going to be looking at the distribution that's overbought and which would be the other schematics. So distribution, when you say distribution, this is, this is distribution. Yeah. This would be the distribution one. So what, what, uh, so distribution is what on this? So you would look, you would look for more, more, uh, you would look for like a stock that's like a stock or a coin that's like over exceeding the market. Like if we're in a bull market and there's a stock that's like, say every, every other stock's doing good, it's going up, but there's one stock that's just like over exceeding, just crushing it. Yeah. And you're, and you're like, okay, this thing's gonna pull back eventually. So then you start putting your uh, white cough in. And th this is where you would start zooming in four hour daily and see where your PSY is, where your two count is for your BC. Wow. And we can get into uh, all the uh, labelings and all that stuff, but that's get into deep. Yeah. You know what? You gave me a couple of things, I think, uh, and we're trading this. There's this, uh, what I did want to ask you, because there's one thing that stands out on all these charts and I'm not an expert on Wyckoff, but I know that, I know that it's all being used in everything that we do. This piece right here, I think is, LPS yeah. is that that's part of the Wyckoff like schematic. Here. You know what's crazy too about the eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's a that's right eight, there is a five nine, wave ten. count for uh, Elliott wave because you could count where eight starts. Nine would here. be one, ten would be two, eleven, twelve, three, four, thirteen would be five, and then on an Elliott wave you would have a smaller count would be an ABC down to fourteen. So that's why the Elliott wave and Wyckoff it's crazy how they correlate. Together. Yes. So when you learned this, did you learn Elliott Wave first or Wyckoff first? I first learned Wyckoff, just studying supply and demand, overbought and oversold, and trying to learn that aspect. And then I started to learn the Elliott Wave stuff. And I I learned, I like started to learn that in the smaller time frames that the Elliott Wave was with the Wyckoff. It was correlating. The first, like I brought Bruce in, and one of the first trades this guy took, it was Luna. Oh yeah, that was insane. I think that was the greatest trade I've ever had. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up. Like, I, I mean, you shorted Luna where? You want to tell him? It was $76. $76, right? Yeah. I'm going to pull up a screen. So here's Luna. And I don't I'm think gonna... I have the chart anymore. I think I deleted it because it's... It's not even on. <laughs> it's not. I don't think they deleted it. I'm pretty sure. There you go. You got to excuse my drawings. <laughs> okay. So you're short shorting Luna. And man, I... I really got to find this because I've never seen precision like this. Right. And so when it comes to trading, most of people, when they're learning, they're kind of like guessing, like, I think this is going to go down, or yeah. I think that I have, I have an idea, 
you know, I'm, I'm more or less guessing when it comes to trading, there's something about precision that makes everything totally different. And the stuff that we're going to talk about, like those schematics, those are ultra precise. And if you look at the difference between, you know, some of the really good traders, their entries are absolutely precise. And if they don't get it, they kind of just, they kind of wait, right? Coming up with that precision and knowing why that matters, like that's a huge deal. So this is your alert. This was like five, six. Usually I do like a range because with crypto, it's so volatile that it'll just pump. It could wake all the way up to my entry top range. So. Yeah. So five, six. And I'm like, okay. You said something in the alert that I was like, well, um, Luna broke parabolic trend. I think what you're just talking about, like Luna had been in this huge uptrend, right? For such a long time. So what made you choose this one specifically over anything? Well, actually, if you look at the top of 120, uh, 120. there's kind of a, a UTAD for the distribution. If you go back to the schematic. So I, so you got, you got to talk to me like a kindergartner, right? So not, I don't know. What is the UTAV? Or actually I can, I can, um, make you the post real quick. Yeah, I actually do that. So Whoa. Up. All right. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, I just lost my screen. I want to pull up this. Yeah. You guys will laugh like that, that Luna short literally at the top. And it was like, it was like instant flusher. And I mean, I've had some flushers, but good Lord, that was one of the most epic flushers I've ever seen, man. So the UTAD would do the up thrust after distribution. Up thrust after di distribution. All right, what's that? Yeah, that's right here. I can actually label it for you guys. And what, is that, what does that really mean? Oh, usually just fake out. Yeah, usually after the distribution, it's gonna be like a huge pump. Yep. It's, yeah, it's really, it's a dead, dead cat bounce in a sense. Yeah. Really what it is. So use, So I see that. And I also have my parabolic trend line, which I'm watching, watching my fibs. It bounces off the one of one, comes up, touches the six eight, perfect. So after it broke the one of one and it broke my trend, my fit. That's parabolic. your entry right there. Yeah, right here. Oh, you dog. Off the screen. UTAD. That's that. I like that. Right. So like in Wyckoff, they have a lot of that stuff, and you guys will see us trading that in the option world literally all the time i think like i can't tell you how many people asked like in the last couple of days like what is your trading strategy blah 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 right like it's it's a combination of all things all these things utad specifically you know how we catch the tops and bottoms of huh yeah bruce did absolutely destroy luna how we catch the tops and the bottoms um and actually can make those some of our entries it to me has a lot to do with these kind of fake outs Right. And like I was trading with a buddy today. I don't know if he's on here or not. When we're looking at stuff, this that schematic that he's got right there. If you're short, a lot of people want to enter short on that bottom baseline. Right. Yeah. And they and they are like, oh, well, I'm going to wait for this. Because to When to they break. see a pump, they want they're thinking, oh, it's just going to keep going up. Yeah. And that's not how I trade. Right. Like I want to be for the most part, I want to be out when you're thinking that you want to be in yeah. or I'm exiting by the time people are thinking, Oh, I want to be in. My um, big thing and, is I try to tell people zoom out. Literally you, you got to zoom out to know where the market's God, going. hundred yeah. percent. That's like my number one rule. Yep. Yeah. So uh, that's actually part of the first rules that we covered was what's we call it full-time conflict, full time frame continuity, right? Where it has to start at the monthly chart chart and mm -hmm. then the weekly chart daily chart. And we have, we gave them all away to keep that, monitored on your um on your charts at all times yeah see the, it's funny too the crypto market it's like sped up a little bit so it's instead of monthly it's weekly daily that's how i've noticed it it's it's honestly insane dude i used to trade me and uh, i know ace too right like everybody knows ace but uh -huh. um like both of us would trade crypto i i used to trade a lot of crypto man but i just <laughs> I you drive yourself it. insane you drive yourself dude. insane yeah, I'm tra trading two markets. Yeah. At the yep. same time, the and like half the time, I don't know what it is about crypto, dude, that like Saturdays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like it wants to go wild sometimes. Yep. I'm like, oh crap, right? Well, if there's certain crazy. times too. It's like 2 a.m. my time. 3 to 5 a.m. is like super volatile because that's when either I think China. It's 
yeah, it's China and Asia and India. They all wake up and they start just trading you like crazy. I'm just like, what the hell? Man? The absolute worst, man. They won't let my trade just my swing trade just work out. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I don't. I mean, I don't know how you do it, but you know, I think that if 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 Bruce isn't in your server, because we have a lot of servers, you guys can ask for him. But um, you know, the leverage that he uses his his trading time, his trade time, time in trade. How would you say that? Yeah. What would you say like your average time in trade in, in market is for for one of your trades? Uh, I guess sometimes it depends, though, too, because if I'm looking for a longer swing, the entry range will be a little bit larger and my leverage right. will be lower. Of course, I'll do like a 5x or something that way yeah. we're not getting liquidated right off the bat. Exactly. And so that's what I wanted to point out, right? Because I like that trade style. A lot of the crypto traders are like, there are some amazing crypto traders, don't get me wrong, right? But this guy stands out amongst the crowd to me because he can do it and structure it in a way where it'll allow, kind of like you guys know my trade style, I have freaking diamond hands sometimes, right? And I, <laughs> I like these sustained moves. So when I saw Bruce also, and I'm like, okay, he likes these same kind of, we're really really trying to go for these bigger moves like the smaller yeah, moves yeah. are great for like small future scalps but honestly man i suck at scalping like i like steven's on he'll tell you like oh, my guys will tell you well, I, if you look at kate <laughs> kate is one of the best crypto scalpers there is i think absolutely the guy's insane yeah it's just like can you you know are you able to do that and i think in you know part of this whole series the purpose of part of it is that you know there's there's no single right way to trade that's a fact Right? Yeah. What's important is that you guys find what's going to work for you. And you cannot do that if you don't get introduced to like some legitimate real strategies that actually work. Right. Like, and so that's what we're just trying to do. For right? example, so, I started out with like trying to do the candlesticks and stuff and I just didn't like it. I couldn't understand it. Didn't understand yeah. it. So then Wyckoff came around. I was like, whoa, I actually like this. I like the structures, yeah. there's schematics, all that stuff. Yeah, so um, so my system is like a combination of this market structure, and I'm using candlesticks to really identify almost that LPS stuff right there. I think it's okay, your yeah. number 14 right there. Yeah. It'll either be a 12 or a 14. Sometimes if I'm feeling scalpy, I can get in on those and that 10 count mm. at the bottom. Yep. Uh, that would, and, be a, that would be a test right there, the 10. Yeah, I'll get in right there because because if I'm going to go long, I can actually have a very, very tight stop at the at the eight, yeah. which really from a risk reward perspective, that's when you'll see some crazy stuff. Yeah. But um, but yeah, people aren't most of the people are thinking about getting in on 13 and they're like market order on 13 and they land themselves at 14 and immediately boom, get stopped out just to see the trade run right and it's like uh how do you how do you avoid that so um i guess can you walk us through like the you know if you're 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 the stock right what am i what am i looking at here what's happening to to the stock on 14. no and just in general right so like sure. it it looks like it's just accumulation right you're creating the supply yeah demand. but inside that there's a lot of stuff going on i think a lot of that's important right oh yeah uh, so like in, in this D category, there's a shit ton of going on. I mean, if I can actually, let's do this. Let's go to the Bitcoin dominance because that's a live. And if you guys have questions, we'll always pulling stuff up. Oh, you know, of course, there's the Q&A section. Um, we're just going to kind of, I wanted to do this kind of like free flow. So it's not, it's not rehearsed or anything, right? It's, it's just, you know, we're going to walk through Bruce's um, strategy and understand how do you, the purpose is just to see how do you read Oh, this is like exactly that chart. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. So this guy will play out each and every little move. Like, how are you doing that, dude? So really, I mean, I'm basing it off OBV and volume. I read everything off OBV and volume. And I don't want to- what's, cover... what's OBV? Uh, on, on balance volume. Okay. You can, you, you can use the regular volume base, but I just, Honestly, I just read, I just like reading OBV better because of the, the line. What, really. what, what, if you're new, right? What does on balance volume mean? Uh, it's just the balance that's on the volume. So like net inflow, net outflow. Yeah. You got it. But, uh, on the, the software that I was taught for my mentor, he uses, uh, the OP, OP, uh, optimistic, uh, I can't remember what the fucking the P, but it's similar to the obv 
but his his reads is like the software reads is like five minute intervals through 96 exchanges or something it's something crazy oh uh, yeah because like if, if you're especially for like trading for crypto you, too it's there's so many exchanges I mean, so yeah many you have to, coming you have out to every select year. what you have, you have to select like what your yeah because it's different prices and it, yeah it's that's where it, it's like insane the data is insane yeah ariel's asking what is creek okay creek 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 creek, 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 creek. creek is usually so after we have our sp spring and test, this will be a, our user, a smaller spring and test after our large or before our larger one, you'll have a huge, it's like a, it's in a sense a fake out, but then you'll have a downward tr channel. Here's a little channel right here. Is there like an order to this operation, dude? Cause this I mean, is, yeah, you, you just gotta complex, like, right? you just gotta base it off your schematic. So when I look at a chart, I'll post a chart up and then I'll put my schematic, look at the overall market structure. So I'll zoom out to my weekly, boom. Oh, are you saying that that schematic is always the same? Usually, yeah. Get out of here. I swear to God, did the distribute? They're all don't do that. They're all the same. There's usually only two distributions, and then you have your accumulation. Stop. All right. So like, and they won't they won't <laughs> necessarily be exactly the same, but you'll be able to tell where your spring and your test is at. So how do you, so, so number one to a rookie, right? So like, like what's a spring, Bitcoin, what's a test and how do test, I tell? If I were to go deep in here, Bitcoin 20 I swear to God, dude, if you tell me that this is exactly this the same be, thing this would as, be the, a, as the stupid dish, I'm going to freak out, man. There's this no be way. A spring right here. Cause that's our new low. So a spring is a new low. Yeah. All right. And we're going to have our test. That's that COVID little fake out just to test the support. So a spring means just like the, the initial, uh, like it's, like it's testing support really was what it is. Okay. That's Got really it. what test means. So that's the spring, test. Spring is, spring is coming down, hitting a new low. Got it. Showing that it's an accumulation. Okay. So then we'll have our, that. this would be, so this would be a smaller, this would be a smaller SOS and LPS right here. So you have SOS right there. What's SOS? Sorry for that. Sign of strength. So it's Sign showing it's showing a movement up upward. It's trying to break out of its accumulation zone. LPS is what? Last point of or last point of supply mode. Last point of supply. Okay. So that's the last point lower. of strength, last point of supply, and same thing. So it would be fair to call that like a higher low or yeah. Got it. Yeah. So SOS is sign of strength. So that's the first, that's the test. That's the first thing that's, you want to see. That's the fake out. For, yeah. So you'll okay, see. Okay. So there's always a fake out. For the, for accumulation though, for SOS, you want to see an SOS. That I shows that it's jumping out. out of accumulation and yep. we're about to run basically into a board. So, so new traders, we never take the first breakout. <laughs> yeah. Half the exactly. time we'll fade it actually. And, and, and I'm just trying to translate. And then right? see, like, that's where the, the Elliott wave comes in the hand or then, yes. so this would be, I could zoom in shit. Um, so if you guys didn't know, right? Like the first break is typically fake, right? And so like, that's where a lot of, in my, uh, you know, experience, at least I'll say for me, I'll just speak for me when I was learning, like that was probably one of the hardest things to understand was that, you know, you get taught like there's retail ways of trading that you can look up on the Google, right? And you know they're they're pretty whack to be honest. Um, but <laughs> well, some of them are wrong, honestly. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like straight up, just don't work. <laughs> and uh, and again, so like this whole this whole SOS or and I'm gonna call it the fake out, right? It looks like it's gonna go right because if you zoom in, right, I can see that clear higher. You know that clear point at what is that like 980 something right yeah. just over 10k and then it clearly broke out and it held and then you get i call that the bart simpson right oh yeah like, that's bart simpson for sure I, yeah, I know that's exactly the, that's the, the face and everything yeah <laughs> so if you guys know this is a crypto specific pattern <laughs> it's called the bart simpson right but uh but I yeah call it's, the, i call it the liquidation <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> the liquidate. liquidate everyone. But it's the fake out, right? It's yeah, like, for sure. it's, and so like, if I'm reading it, you know, to me as a trader, right now, as, as an experienced trader, I'm reading that as like, you know what, this thing does not have enough buyers yet. Right. Yep. And so to me, if it's not pressing and it's just, it's gone up and it's holding, I'm out. Right. But like, what, how does, how, but I, and I'm only out because in my mind, what has to happen? And maybe Wyckoff tells us this, but like, why does that have to come down? One, one, it has to come down because you're, we're coming through an accumulation and it's not just going to pump automatically out and just a huge run because people are skeptical. They're not, they're thinking, oh, it's just going to come back down into or the zone, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to come down. People are shorting. Everyone's going against it. Yeah. So it's going to have it come down and it's going to come see how it tests this. It tests it actually. Perfect. It's crazy. Yep. Come down, test the support, strength, test the support of strength. And this is where I like, come in with the Elliott wave is. So then I see that we have the one, two. I would say, okay, let me, let me count this as a three. If, if we're coming down here for support, this will be a wave four. Let's go ahead and put in a long right here. So then we use the support as our stop loss and then play for the five. Yeah. So how do you identify like where? Okay. So man that is just like the most epic part simpson right but so yeah. if so all of these so what we just went through with the strat um and they're talking in chat right uh all of these will actually be tradable each one of them right so you can and i'll just to be clear you can trade that initial breakout but and that's what you would use something like the strat for but the strat would also tell you to be out for sure like right after probably you know 12 like right after 1175 or something right so that's that's one way right but yeah. but what we're teaching you guys right now is the broader market structure right like the problem that i see right now is that a lot of people came into trading at that covid low right and yeah. and back then you know when you saw a breakout dude you just had to hammer it and you could I hold mean, that guy for days I mean, who who was really buying here everyone was freaking the fuck out on everything <laughs> like, yeah come on yeah, for sure. Right. And, and, uh, but at the COVID low, you could buy, right. And you could buy like a leap if it was options. And, yep, yep. and honestly, you, you didn't have to worry about knowing when to sell because everything was just continuously going and going and going and going. Yeah. Right. Um, and so what, what's real in markets and what is repeatable and sustainable is this understanding this kind of market structure. So it, like, like, yes, take your profit if you if you caught that first one but don't be going you know for your your moonshot out of the gate right yeah, it's just not no. or really that's ever not, right that's like, not very good risk management period <laughs> yeah so we, we we got ace coming in to talk about risk management that dude is like off the hook with that but um uh so i there's a couple other questions i mean how so one because bright buddies asked in the right spot he said how to read obv so I think that's kind of what I was asking earlier, but on balance, OBV on balance volume. Let me pull up the, uh, there's two bullish divergences. One bullish OBV happens when price declines, but OBV advances. Two other, uh, other less common bullish divergence, which I've noticed in crypto a lot, is uh, price action holds while OBV, OBV, OBV makes new lows. Got it. Okay. So, so just because I know some of them are newer, um, in chat, do you guys know what a divergence is? Just curious. Okay. So, um, do you just want to show them just, uh, cause I, I can just show them these examples. It's yeah. Perfect. It's beautiful. So here you see OBV is making new lows while price here is, uh, rising and holding. Therefore that's a bullish divergence. You want to start buying or I would alert. This is a buy here. So just to clarify, right? So um, a divergence is when the chart, and these are called oscillators on the bottom that he has. Um, well, is that an oscillator? I don't know if that is. It's not a normal indicator by any means. No. Um, but, but when the chart and your indicator are saying two different things, like they're diverging. Um, yeah. A lot of people use divergence when it comes to reading RSI. Uh, and, and that means like when the chart is making higher lows, but the RSI is making 
lower lows. Those the two things, the chart and in your indicator are diverging in what they're saying. So that is actually what you want to read in any indicator in general um, when it comes to oscillators and, and apparently things like this. But um, and, and yeah, and you don't take them by themselves as signals like that's and you're looking the, for, uh, for this stuff. The bullish and the, just divergences in general go and go hand in hand with Wyckoff and volume. And like I said, it all comes down into volume for Wyckoff. Okay, and I had uh, so what was it? Uh, yeah, so we got a lot of questions. I'm gonna go. Brandon's asking where where do you how do you decide where to start wave one? Yeah, if you guys can throw these into the Q and A section. It's like bullish divergence, hidden bullish divergence. Yeah, yeah, That's Nick, you're right, spot on. It's very, very similar. <clears throat> okay, so enter on lower high consolidation. All right, so, okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on in your chart, man. Yeah, I know. I don't want to get the crazy charts out because it'll get insane. Yeah, so, all right. So do we have, so we got, what is, you know, we got basic accumulation. And then if you're short, if you're looking potential short, you're looking at distribution, right? Which yeah. is that is distribution the inverse of accumulation, or do we need to do that separately? Yeah. So this would this right here would be accumulation zone. I could maybe do this right here. And then so for a new trader, accumulation is the same as supply or demand. Supply is going to be a, the accumulation of supply, and the demand is the uh, distribution of of the area. Usually, I do two support lines, so I know where. So you could you could honestly count this as a second SOS and LPS too. Yeah. And then we would have our distribution. This would be a smaller form, of course, but larger LPS Y E right there. I mean, you could count a smaller accumulation here. I mean, it could just it could go on and on forever. For for waves though. You, you, what I use is fibs. I mean, you have to use fibs for waves for sure, for sure. I use extend, trend fib extend. Usually I count this like right here. So this would be my wave one. Dude, I just got like a, a headache. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers that just came out. So for wave one to two, what you're looking for I mean, you're looking for how do you identify to, wave one so how did you identify that as the test? i'm looking for a, a pump just a rise a rise and then a a, a test of support so it comes down we had a rise and it comes down with test support so i'd count that as wave one two so then i'd grab my fib my fib trend extension go down here is one come down to supports two and then usually wave three hits the 1.618 fib so then I count my three to the 1.618, which I mean, it could come up just a little bit under, a little bit over. I mean, yeah. I'm just looking for in the general area. And then usually wave four comes around the one of one FIP to usually, sometimes in crypto, it comes to this 0.786, but usually I try to look for the one of one, which it comes right underneath. Okay. Then, so you're getting into this precision stuff right now, for sure. So like, so we don't lose people, right? Like yeah. they're looking at the chart um and and where are your entries exits and how do you how do you trade this this kind of like theory my entry would you would more than likely be because i'd have to zoom in on this big time because in these smaller wave to one twos there's triangles and these triangles will have an a, a bullish count would be like a um let's see if i can show you here's a bullish triangle right here and there's these triangles come in smaller forms too. So this would be a bullish triangle, an A down, B up, C down, which would be the COVID low, D, and the E can come halfway. It doesn't have to come all the way back down to test the support. But these triangles would be in A. So this would be a larger wave one, two, and you would have a three, four down here. And then that goes on with all the smaller counts too. But you would, I would look to long either the c down so it'd be like the c down here or like a a and then set my prop my uh stop loss at the uh support low which would be the a low 
So how did, how would you know though? Like that that's that's the test. I think like finding out like where beforehand, right? Like so maybe even if you could take like a current trade that you. Well, looking. I would draw the uh, the triangles, draw my trend lines. I mean, I can't show it like a smaller triangle because the chart would go crazy. But that's fine. I would so I first I would look for my A, find my low. Okay, it made its low. So, so I'm gonna A means A means higher low. Yeah, I mean that's. It's it's low on the uh, on the count. Let me get the wave. So these are this would be a bullish Elliott wave count for a triangle. So I find my A. So I draw my A. Then I, I you, you're really you're guessing where your B is going to be, but you know that you're going to have a B up no matter what. But so, so there's there's like that Elliott wave like uh, chart stuff, right? Like because and we have and you gone. could and then you could come down into like the five wave count count one two three four five and go into deep depth of like four hour one hour smaller time frames all that but we're just focused on the larger aspect of what's going on yeah so far like, like if we get into wave counts so it's gonna be like way over it gets over, insane over the head. but usually that's what you're what you're really looking for is that low that a wave low and then you can figure out where your b is going to be where your c is going to be so Okay, so we could probably so the I mean, accumulation. I, I mean, on that smaller one wave two, you would look for like I mean, like you can barely see it. That would be like that A right there. Then you have like a B. So you would long at that C down. You'd li literally just set like a limit, limit by around there that C wave. So, so moving from okay, we got so accumulation is essentially just like a big long time frame of it being in a in a lower area right yeah and inside that accumulation we have like little tiny baby patterns inside that whole thing yep right and then a distribution is a big long area above uh, above, accu the accumulation. above accumulation that isn't continuing is basically going sideways more or yeah. less yeah. right and, and then inside that sense, big yeah. yeah inside that big sideways there's um a bunch of little patterns that are that can be like elliott waves or or you know uh what break it down into the, the you know. yeah the wyckoff labelings and all that stuff yeah so then uh if you're looking for a trade right and without getting into the like super like m like minute details uh because i want to get there but like the the larger time frames or the larger scale moves right like what what's the main entries that you're looking for and like how do you how do you really identify those or are you even looking at larger ones and or are you just playing the smaller ones as they come larger larger time frames like this i'm i'm looking for the cycle counts like these are these are this would be a cycle count i'm gonna put in the log should we should we learn about cycle counts i mean that just comes into the elliott wave theory again it's just cycle super cycle counts it's just larger five wave counts is really what it is so uh, so like so new, this would right? this what would is be a like wave? a huge one two right but like what what is that and like what what is what is elliott wave theory i guess elliott wave theory is it's it's yeah because uh, we, we don't know that right like you got there's zigzags there's corrective waves there's diagonals there's like you're leading there's the impulse, impulse and, waves. Uh, yeah impulse uh there's i mean there's a shit ton of waves you just have there's so many you have to explain honestly yeah, yeah i don't want to get like too in depth that right so i'm just at like high know. level right because if we're going to talk about waves then we got to need need to know like what we're talking about super high level so the first wave about half of the first waves are part of the basing process in counting the five waves up which is then followed up by a corrective wave two. The first wave rise is usually displaying a small increase in volume. So that's the fake out? Yeah. Okay, so the first move, and so when we think waves, waves is just like a, a piece of market structure, right? So the first move, wave is move. So the first move is a fake out, is what I'm reading. Yeah, and then, basically. And it creates- And it comes down and tests that The basing process. Is that yeah. what that says? Yeah. All right. So it's tradable. 
each each one of these waves or each one of these moves are very tradable. You can and trade in that in that in that uh, in that little small triangle. That's the the support it comes down to. So that's what I'd be looking to buy is that Got support. It. So once I find that it has that support area, I'll be looking for another way that comes down into that triangle area. Let's see. So if you if you miss the original move, right, which is probable, right? Yeah. It should so it you should would, be more than likely you're gonna miss this A down. Bingo, right? And so that's what you're actually looking for then, right? Yeah. So you're looking for that fake out to really start looking at the chart. The Bart like, Simpson. Okay, because yeah, more than a likely, trade, no is, one's a trade catch, is about to happen. Catch the zero down here because you don't know that it's starting a wave one, two. You need to uh, initially see that it starts the wave two, long the wave two, and then look for the take profit areas, which will be your okay. fibs, and then we get into all that. So if we go back to your your slide slides real quick, right? So the first one, I'm looking for a fake out, right? And and that's what's going to tell me, okay, a trade is about to come. So then the second wave is is that the trade second wave retrace usually a lot deeper than most okay so maybe a little bit below support is what i'm yeah. reading so if you think of support as horizontal lines right like the you know og and the strat last last time we're like he, you laugh at like horizontal line traders like they'll call them that but it's because this is goes back to those broad informations by the way um and so this second wave it's a little bit below support is what i'm reading yeah yeah, let's go back right here. So yeah, look at there's support right at this wick. I see it. That was right below. Yeah. So like if if you were trying to go long, that's another fake out to the downside then. Yeah. Those guys might get stopped out. But the reason and I'm and I'll just kind of walk through this like from my like And that's why I don't I don't long the A wave. I like to see where it's gonna go. Just let it be patient. Just let it see where it's gonna go. I mean yeah. I just so try like, to tell everyone be patient. The stock couldn't go up basically because there weren't enough buyers. So how does the stock get more buyers? It doesn't continue to go up, right? Like it needs to come back down yeah. to collect more friends that can buy it yeah. and then it can make a move, right? And so that's that's what we're looking at. And, it, and it's typically just below a support level. So and Bruce is our saying- C, Our C come back up to that support level. Yeah, so up. you watch the, the it. E comes in tests. Yeah. E and E is usually where I look for longs. Right there, right? So you yeah. watch it come back down and it might be a short actually at that point, but you don't know, right? So you're watching yeah. it and you're, you watch it. Okay, I believe it's gonna come down slightly below support, but then it's gonna quickly boom in your face. Anybody that was trying to short, See, well, they're this, gonna- That's where all the scalpers come in. They start bingo. 100Xing down here. You're like, Jesus. And then yeah. 100X here, it's like- wow, Yeah, it's, it's all tradable. Right. Yeah. But like my, my, this market theory, right? Like if you pretend that you're the stock, right? What's going on? Right. And so why, why is this price action happening? Right. So it's, it can't go up because there's not enough buyers. So how does it get more buyers? It needs to come back down. Right. So either people get tired of holding and they sell. Right. Yeah. Or, or the shorts start piling in because it's not going higher because there's clearly not enough buyers. In either case, it's going to come down. And so it comes down and, it'll, and it needs to come down slightly below support to what, to, to collect more buyers. So have more people buy it, right? Because anybody that bought, here's the thing, support that red line is a line because that's where they stopped buying, right? Does that yep. make sense to you guys? So if they stop buying there, because that was the prior high, it needs to come down just a little bit lower because the person who bought at that red line, they're not gonna add until it's really a little bit less. And at that point they will add and then it, it hangs out and then then you get your at that point it's actually like a strap candlestick setup but it's it's as long as it's above not the first low but a higher low to go long does that make yeah, sense exactly a series of higher lows is not just one but if you want to take a longer position it's a series of higher lows can you zoom into yeah, that yeah, yeah I got that you. section because that is the trigger section right and it's super important to understand this <clears throat> so inside this, it's a series of, of higher lows and, and it is lower highs, but they're all accumulating above that, that red, um, what we're going to call a support line basically. And then once you get that final inside that triangle, that's probably even more waves, I'm sure, <laughs> but, oh, but inside yeah, I that, want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, um, 
but then you're you're good to go um and then you have basic sauce but if you thought that the first one was the one to take like right on that right where you're hovering over right around september yeah. if you thought that first one was the one to take you were sadly mistaken and you would probably quickly got stopped out and as a new trader, you would have quickly got stopped out only to see it go back above <laughs> support. Yeah. And then you would have added long just to see it flushing your face, which oh you would have God then like it. sold again, right? Actually, you probably would have shorted, sorry. Yeah. And then it would have gone long once again in your face. And it would have been like, that's the, that's the journey of, a, of, you know, initial trading. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like this structure is, is super important. It's, it's not always exact, right? But you no. got to understand that there's there's a method to the madness, right? There's a theory, right? There's a, you know, um, it, it needs to do this kind of price action. So you can't always go for like longer. And one thing trades. I like, so one thing I like to do in my discord is I'll do a, like Bitcoin roadmaps yeah. of like what I think this count of what I think the Bitcoin will do in the future. And I'll have what uh, an LA wave there's called alternating counts, alternation counts. And you could have a bullish and a bearish count of what's going to happen. And these are accounts that can happen or that are valid that can happen. Nice. So, um, okay. So we got through two waves then basically. Right. And so this very end of that, like, it's that, what is that? One, two, three, four higher lows in quick succession and a very consolidated period. That's really what you're looking for over a, 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 a somewhat significant period of time if you're day trading it's actually can be as small as an hour right if you're yeah. swing trading you want to be looking at this daily chart or maybe higher right to get your your kind of counts um but so that's like what's the third wave so i know there's how many waves are there that's five right. yeah five. so okay so so you know taking me through the life of a stock right so wave three <laughs> third wave what does it say third waves are the best of any wave count okay uh usually come out of the gate strong with volume and price payment so that's the one that most retail people like will be looking for they're looking for that's so usually IT. that's usually the the swing trade i'm looking for is i'm Boom. long okay. two and looking to take profit on three so it's not even the second breakout it's the third wave that you're looking for all right yeah so it's usually the biggest all right so the third wave usually proceeds or produces a real breakout so the second wave is going to be a short term trade and then yeah. the third wave is a longer term trade yep first first wave scalpy right yeah because it's a fake out you get second wave Bart simpson yeah it's first wave scalpy second wave a little bit longer than scalpy third wave big time full court press yep. got it um and you're looking it's a continuation third wave i'm reading this i is is matched with volume uh okay most clues for count to count waves all right should i read fourth or do you want to sh should we go to, to the go chart? chart so the the two number two so the number two, two was right. the entry right yeah and so that's a you smaller c or d or c or e my bad. a smaller trade got it yes. and that two. takes you from 10 to 10 to 70. i mean I don't want to, but you get into the, like a subdivided wave. So subdivided yeah, yeah. waves are smaller waves inside larger yeah. waves. Yeah. So what, what he's saying is that we're going to, we're going to go through the higher time frame. but what we show you here, you can zoom in almost on any time frame and see the exact same thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the whole, that's the whole market structure. So second move took you from 10 to 70 to 1900 or, oh. I mean, that's a big move. Yeah. All right. So we would have entered on that too. How do I know that I could still hold it that whole time? Two. So this is where I would be setting my take profit zones and which yeah. would be uh, with my fibs and all that stuff. And I would count this subdivided wave two or five waves up. So you're doing the same thing. So when we, when we did the strat, it was the same thing. It's like, I'm once I'm in a larger time frame setup, then I'm zooming into a smaller time frame. Yeah to continually see the same exact setup repeat itself on a smaller time frame. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. So same kind of logic, right? So if you're new, remember, we're starting high time frame, find a larger time frame setup, right? And once I'm in a trade, I'm just zooming into that daily, hourly, 15 minute even, right? Or even lower, it depends yeah. on where you are. But 
you first need to know that you're you're trading a larger setup. And then once you're in that, then I'm just looking for that same setup to really just repeat itself on a smaller and smaller time frame. That that tells me to hold it. If it shows me a distribution setup, right? Like maybe later, um, that's when you need to get out. But um, but not until then you can continue to hold. So as long as you know what this what this whole process looks like, that's what we're trying to show you. Um, but okay, so so walk us through the rest. So oh, enter yeah, two. I can continue to see it. Yeah. You have your like subdivided five where's, ways up. Where's your Three exit on this larger time frame? My exit would probably be. I'd be looking to take. I'd shave some off around here. On this would be like the subdivided wave three four right around here. Okay. So shave some off. Raise our profit stops to here, which would be like I raise it to the fourth wave down right around here. Right. Like the E wave, and then continuously while it comes up. Usually how I how I trade is I just keep raising our profit stops to let our runners keep going. Yeah. So I actually did the same thing in in my bot inside the servers. All say something called trailing stop, and I was actually shocked, like how many people didn't know what a trailing stop was, but it's just an automatic way to do what he's saying. Um, it, but it's basically like you start out when you're doing your trade, your initial stop is your, you know, is that base yeah. red red line, right? And as it makes a market structure move, right, which is like a series of higher highs or higher lows or lower highs and lower lows in the direction of your trade, you're just moving your stop up one one of those rungs or levels at a time right yep. not not necessary and again this is back to trade style i'll talk to mine it's similar to bruce's for sure because we're both naturally swing traders um for sure and it's 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 probably it's actually like two levels down that i'll, I'll hold a stop right not whereas yeah. like a day trade or a scalper would be like the very next level yeah. i i don't do that because like right where that mouse you're is, expecting like, it to pull back you know that it's gonna pull exactly back. right like i'll i'll hold my trades way longer than most people like i'm yeah. in a trade multiple hours even as a day trade whereas a lot of people are in like minutes and it's just it's not that it's one way is better than the other that's not true right what's true is that that's just what works for me and the way that i do it and similar to bruce is like we know that there is a method to the market's madness right like there There's is a market structure that we can visibly see and i expect it to pull back and I expect it maybe to fake out. And yeah. as it does all these things while we're in a trade, look, if I know, if I'm short, like, or long, right? Like I know that it's gonna go past support, but then if I'm short, I know that it's gonna go past support or the next level of support yep. and, and then it's gonna come back up. So I'm actually, if I'm already in the trade, I'm gonna take profit below support, knowing yep. that it's gonna come back up. And, and I'm you gonna say you're set your profit stops in that way if it does come back up a it hit my profit stops i'm still on profit it is what it is yeah absolutely and sometimes like you can average anyways but it's 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 what i wanted to note because we'll start to build onto that but uh i actually want to say something i actually have one guy in my uh server he so i do on my swing trades i'll post them as swing trades but he i don't know how he does it. he manages his risk so well that He'll 100x them and do my scalps and kills them. It's crazy. Dude, that is awesome. All right. So I got, I, I do have a, a stop at six Eastern, which is like another 30 minutes. So hit us with, hit us with some of the next main components that we should know if we're going to be learning um, basic like market structure. Basic market structure for just Wyckoff or just, yeah. or so Wyckoff. Wyckoff, you just let's go back to the basics. Just really, really, what we want to really focus on is just zooming out to that weekly or that daily, or if you're doing stocks monthly, whatever it is, and figure out what what is the market doing. Are we in a bull run or is it is it in a bearish bearish time frame? Figure okay. out once you figure out if it's a bearish time frame, figure out what its lows are, what its springs are, uh, what our uh, tests are. Uh, figure out figure out what your lows are. That's number one i think and then same for goes for if you're in distribution see which stock is stock or coin is exceeding expectations everyone's expectations so it, it could be making a really high high there or something that's just 
simple Wyckoff sch schematics, looking at schematics. And then I can go over the five-step approach too. Yeah. So that, I, I think that's going to be huge. So like for a new trader, a lot of them, um, I get, I get asked a lot, like, how do I, you know, how do they find, you know, uh, trades, right? And that's, um, that's part, it's actually part in this uh, system, right? So like at the beginning of the Wyckoff stuff, it's like, how do you find like the better, why would I trade Amazon over Google or yeah. Facebook yeah. over Microsoft, right? Like, you wanna walk I that. mean, in a sense, it comes down to like volume, I guess, really. Because I, what I look for is, I mean, there's some people who trade penny stocks and small volume and stuff, but Wyckoff's mainly on like big volume coins and stocks is really what you're looking for when it comes down to it. So, so I understand the person who would say, I'd rather trade Amazon over something that's smaller. I don't know. Can't, there's one stock Arlo say that. So yeah, like uh, what I would like, I'll carry on it. Right. So volume is huge, right? That's number one. Um, but like in, in, and every Monday we do like a, a weekly trade plan actually and in that trade plan we're actually going through <clears throat> like what how do you find the stocks right so you're in wyckoff it's basically saying look you look at trends of the markets but the mark each market is subdivided into different sectors right if it's if it's crypto you have your nft sector right yeah. you have your uh layer one sector your utility layer two sector right and you have your your meme coins whatever <laughs> yep. right and each one of them has their own little trend inside of the larger trend so yeah, yeah. What, what it what it says basically is to find the strongest trend of those little subsectors right and then once you once you get into that find your strongest candidate of that sector so we, we'll call like like the alpha or like maybe you're looking for something called beta right whichever yeah, one yeah. alpha being uh in stock terms alpha means like the most outperforming of the yeah. group right uh beta doesn't mean beta means that that one's going to actually move the the with the most momentum of the group. So okay. beta, if if a if a sector is going up, having a high beta will mean that that's actually going to move up more than the rest. Mm -hmm. It's it in a short time frame, right? It's going to yeah. move up more, like a snap would be a high beta in the communication sector. It doesn't mean that snap is going to have a more sustained move. No, that would be like a Facebook, but snap would have a higher beta than a Facebook. So if it's a quick, very, very volatile, like high volume move, you know, those smaller assets are actually going to be a higher percentage return for your risk, if that makes yeah. sense. Uh, yeah. But at, on the conversely, right, if it's if it's the downside, those beta candidates will be, um, <laughs> they're going to dump 10 times harder, like how DocuSign or whoever, those are high yeah. beta names. DocuSign will dump, right? Like Zoom dumped. Um, you know, in the tech sector, like those are your, you'll, you'll know now, right? Those are the high beta, um, like candidates, right? Where Microsoft is clearly alpha, right? It, it'll hold its, yeah. its value. Um, but you can find other things like, you know, uh, what's comparable. I don't know, but you, you can find other things that will move bigger. So anyways, it says, look for the subsectors, right? Find the strongest one and then go inside that sector and find the best candidate of that sector to trade that same exact trend of the larger sector. You want to do, so we did basically like, you know, what is the market structure in terms of the like general waves, right? So first one fake out, cool. Second, so first one scalp move, right? Not going to hold. Second one, a little bit more sustained move. Uh, and third one is a big, is the Huge bigger run. One, yeah. Right. Okay, cool. So if you're trading, right, you can do like a small position and we'll, we'll typically build into these positions. If it's, if it's this whole structure on a smaller time frame, that might mean that you're averaging up, right? Um, you want to show distribution right here on your five wave, your fifth wave up, so this is the fifth wave up here. So how do I know that something is at an end? So it, it, so there's only five waves, right? Yeah. So like there's, if, if one wave means one move, so is there only big moves? So the first small move and each move gets a little bit bigger. Yeah. How, usually, do I, how do I tell the difference? Usually the, 
the fifth wave run up is just a bit just as big as the like the first wave run up usually uh, or if if not just like just a bit bigger or smaller you know what i mean okay yeah it so won't, it won't be exact every time because i don't think anything's exact every time got it so if i'm in a swing trade right the first one got my attention it was a fake out but now i'm really looking to enter and yep. then and then i'm in and i'm in for two more sustained moves yeah. Typically, so right? you'd, be, two, you'd be looking three, one hour, 15 minute, whatever for the subdivided. Sure. You're counting those. Okay. And then what was, what was wave four? So we have our wave four down right here. Is that typically bigger or like the same type of pullback? That looks like a bigger pullback. It's about, it's about the same, but I can pull up the guidelines for it too. So fourth waves are usually predictable in both in the depth it falls and or form by what it's talked about alternation. So this is the alternations accounts I was talking about. The fourth wave should differ from the second wave. More than likely, the fourth wave trend is usually sideways, more than likely triangle, building the base of the fifth wave higher. So we go back to our chart. So it's sideways. Look at look how sideways that is. Yeah. So that's and like you, where we are it's in like the a, current like S and P. In a sense, the channel really is the way I look at it. And honestly, Elliott wave in another sense, and we get bigger into the wave theory. It's channels. It's big on channels. Very, very big on channels. You can count a lot of waves through channels. Yeah, that's super helpful. And that's like we could we can go through that too. So if I've gone one fake out, two sustained move, three sustained move, between two and three, it doesn't look like there's much of a pullback at all. It looks like that's a lot of strength. Right. Yeah. And then um four is a bigger pullback, but it's still gonna pop, but it's not, it's not bigger than the prior high. It still has yeah. to be, it has to be above the prior high. So it means it's still going in the uptrend and you could trade that one also. Right. Yeah. And then, so after the four, then it stalls. Usually this is, this is three, four. Like I said, it's probably where I start shaving off 50 to 75 percent of our trade. Yep. Razor, razor stops around here, three or four. Usually I'd probably raise it to the top of three. Either I would say, let's take the rest of it here, right around right around here. Usually if we just get above three or I just say, let's just leave our stops and then raise it as we go. Maybe we get a fifth hair, fifth wave higher because you could get a subdivided fifth wave higher too. So after that though, after, after, after four, five waves, you're done. After five waves. Yeah. After five waves, you're done. And then you move okay, on so to it has a, at least it has a, it has a clear beginning, middle end then. Right? Yeah. Would yeah, I'm gonna, I want to put, I'll try to put together a, like a little ebook just for like basic structures of waves and basic structures of like off schematic schematics. Oh, you're going to, you're going to write a book. Yeah. I'll just, it'll be like something super quick, nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah. Like basic bullets. Yeah, exactly. So uh, why wouldn't you call one nine one six two red line number three wave three blow water as it happens? Oh, you probably could, right? It just depends on what your trade was in, right? Like that's that's the he's saying why wouldn't you trade? Are you saying why wouldn't this you one? trade wave three short? I'm looking at our Q and A. Oh, what red line? Here, hit Control Z a sec. Not oh, yeah, okay, got nineteen thousand one sixty two. Yeah, that's what I thought. So why wouldn't you? This would so this would be the subdivided wave. This would be so. There's our E. So this would be one, two, three, four. And we have a five here. So this would be the sub waves higher right here. These Got are it. the larger time frames. This gives you the time periods for each of the waves. So you have your grand super cycle, Holy super cycle, hell. cycle. <laughs> you have the daily, it gets crazy. Okay. Yeah. So this is like that's ultra precision. So you yeah, if you want to, if you want to throw it together, we can send it out for sure. Uh, and I know you had you had a couple like specific settings for how you do like fibs and fib extensions. Yeah, yeah. Just stuff that works for me. It's not like you have to do it that way. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then if you guys, so I know we're getting close on time. If you guys have questions, so Bruce's Twitter handle is at Bitcoin Bruce one. And like, just give him a follow, search him. Um, let me see, Bitcoin, Bit, do I have that right? Bitcoin. DM me, message me, I'm always there. Always hit me in the server too. DM me on Discord. I'm always here. Always here. Yeah. Um, well, you're not in a whole lot of servers, to be fair. Right. No, and yeah. that's and part of that, 
is because this guy's like the most expensive analyst that you could buy. <laughs> but but also like, I mean, he he deserves it too, I would say. <laughs> I try to be so, as active as I possibly can. I try to be as active as more than anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get it. But like you, you, you guys can find him at, at Bitcoin Bruce, the number one. And like, yeah, he's posting his charts up there, all kinds of craziness. Uh, and yeah, dude, I'm looking at this, your current, can you give us the current situation on Bitcoin? Cause I'm looking at your charts, yeah. your B Bitcoin dominance. That looks like that accumulation. So are you thinking long or short right now? So for Bitcoin dominance, I think we're going to get that pullback for the LPS. But so LPS is shit. <laughs> you gotta, that's a fake at one of the See, fake LPS. Usually when L, the, when Bitcoin dominance pulls back, also rise. But right now, my count for Ethereum is I'm looking for a fourth wave down or a fifth wave down to the larger time frame. This okay, so you're, this, so this would mean big giant dump coming. Yeah, let me delete across this so the you board. guys can see it better. So if Bitcoin's going to go down in terms of dominance, but you're also looking at the smaller market caps going down. Yeah, so it's gonna, usually it's gonna if like 90% loss on if the If Bitcoin goes down <laughs> and, and Bitcoin dominance goes up, that will make everything else go down. But if right. Bitcoin dominance goes down and Bitcoin goes up, then the alts will also go up. There's like a, it's a, there's a yeah. different forms. So yeah, how it goes out. Yeah, I always, I, I, in, in my thing, I have like a, yeah, like the series of like, okay, so Bitcoin's the majors, we'll call the majors, right? Like the yeah. majors will go up first and then the miners will like go up with high beta, meaning like they'll go up, 5x 10x what the beta yeah, went up exactly. uh what the alpha like there's the some major alts today that, look at this alt today 23 percent just Band? because yeah just because bitcoin dominance fell just a little bit yep okay and so like, so Jesus. you're saying all right yeah and this is like that rotational stuff so it goes back to where do i want to be in the market right do i want to be in a major or a minor right like in uh in an alpha or a beta type yeah. move a lot of stuff to learn man absolutely a lot of stuff yeah we actually as I'm like blowing stock, on DXY you know, today, dollar Pumped. Dixie all the time too, yeah. So I don't think that we could ever really get through like the Elliott Wave stuff. So if you guys have like more questions on that, again, like hit them up on Twitter. Um, I I think you know, can we go back to that accumulation yeah. distribution kind of schematic? This is me. I got like ten minutes. Then oh yeah, let me do that. cool. So so here is like any time frame which what I really wanted to show you guys is like any time frame here, when, when you're looking at this, this can be that kind of schematic to the upside or to the downside, it doesn't really matter. Um, if, if this was essentially, uh, okay, so keep that right there, I love that. Um, right, oh, gotcha. Yeah, so in the section D, right, there's a 12 that comes down. That's the fake out, right, of the big yeah. move. And if whatever time frame you're looking at, so, if it's small, even if it's a five minute, it doesn't matter if it's a one minute, right? Like you're, you're, you already have your bigger time frame that you know that you have a bigger sustained move happening. Spy, spy, and um, actually, dude, you want to pull up uh, SPY real quick? Because I know we have a ton of uh, stock traders, and I, I'm probably press, I'm probably pushing it. Just type S SPY. Okay. So that that whole flat period is like two weeks right oh right here right here I got yeah you, I yeah got you, I got so you. that little box I right see it now. so so what i want there you go so i want to want to point out is like this is one of those oh, distribution yeah, periods distribution for sure exactly right and so this is live trading right now right we have fundamental catalysts at the same time tomorrow morning bingo right so the first breakout how would you trade something like this we traded it short today on that initial wave. And this, uh, I'm just trying to do um, like- I mean, you could look for, so let's go back to our- Yeah, be the L so Nick's saying right like there. that's a Bart Simpson in, 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 in the making, potentially. Right there. And yeah, you, it is. You would just look, you could also short right here, look for a break of that support. Yeah, yeah. That's so I think one. most everybody was short. Um, actually, if you click on, where it says RTH next to your clock on the bottom right, click on ETH. Just I can't really see the dip, e, extended ETH. Gotcha. Yeah, I just need to see. So like today, I think like my me and my guys were short right at the beginning of that. Yeah, today's uh, okay. where were we? 
it was like right out of the gate actually you'd have to type like slower time frames um, it's like right here i think yeah it would be yeah even if you're on yeah i use three right there right so that double top in the morning yep. out of the gate gotcha. <clears throat> close some um, and then had yet another lower high but we knew that that was going to come out right like so we knew like i we're taking profits we know it's going to bounce a little bit and then we're like really loading um this just today right because we already knew that we we're in this larger yeah. distribution right so and i covered a lot of stuff short today and um i look at this tomorrow if this is the first move out of a distribution right what would typically happen per elliott wave per elliott wave. well i was just looking at this right now too yep it's live i was seeing one two three four this would be a five yep so, so this is probably, 12 right on like your a, schematic that's a 12 to me i yeah. think uh, and i'm looking at it from elliott wave pers perspective right now okay so I, you'd have like a smaller abc up before i'm thinking come down a little bit lower right so i think most what i'm trying to say is that most traders might have pressed a bet short right like a heavy bet like yeah. you you might and so tomorrow if we open down i would actually probably be looking for a small bounce up right yeah exactly I, that's why i say that abc up yes yeah and so you're up four. to on the distribution right it's the same exact situation shit i can see the creek i can see the whole thing god damn <laughs> um but yeah so this yeah, would be that, that this would be the abc up for elliot yep. so 13 yeah 13 hits that yellow line right and then breakdown and then the real breakdown begins yeah. so if you weren't short today right that's what you could be looking for yeah is that uh, lpsy lpsy yeah beautiful and which is last point of supply boom and so like in just to flip it right you know how would you know that something like that is invalid invalid would be so look at here's the support we have our support line right here it yeah just touches under the support so invalid would be it would come it breaks out of support and you start seeing an uptrend then that would be it would be invalid it'd be invalid count yeah so like if, if i was gonna here. i mean this one comes up just a little bit but it's still bingo it doesn't completely break you do, it doesn't complete clean break that's what i call yeah. it a clean break so right there that one that i actually would you know because supply demand it's not a hard line right it's not a hard yeah. line in sand it's always kind of varying um draw out the white cliff yeah i was trying to get them too here you want to go back to spy yeah I got, I got we got three minutes and then we'll do you'll be if this plays out dude you'll be a magician right grab a little paintbrush tool from the left and draw it draw it out from and then what an abc would be from abc usually kind of like right on here and then come back down and then another down. zigzag yeah perfect so what what i what i want you guys to see is like look you don't need to fomo into a short here right the ones that we got today were like okay slap it right and we know we're gonna push and it's gonna push with momentum but tomorrow you know we got some stuff there's fundamental events if it does it's not likely to continue like this epic flusher i think you know people might still be in that kind of buying zone but you know a yeah. real uh, and it could actually come up above 408 right like yeah and that, no, that sure. would be like like the other ideal let's bring that up See it? I mean, it comes back up over support right there. Yeah. So it's for sure it could happen. So tomorrow, that might be all of tomorrow. Yeah, but, really. And tomorrow's Friday. I think it will be. I know. Yeah. Uh, and, but <laughs> then, really then we have more stuff coming on Wednesday and, and the like. So, you know, it's a short term trade. Each one of these things are absolutely tradable, is my point, right? But you learn yeah. what this basic market structure looks like as long as it's a higher low or a lower low or higher high, whatever, right? If you're able to identify where it is in this general, and I'm using very loose, very general like uh, trend, right? This is really being able to identify the trend. And we'll follow up all this stuff to get you guys, you know, like dialed in on options and, and seeing this. But I, I, I wanted you guys to know, number one, it's not something that we're making up because there are other professional traders and, and Bruce is a, it trades for a living, right? So yeah, like yeah. It, there are other professional traders. It doesn't matter what, what market you're coming from. All of this is the same across all markets. 
Um, and it's just it's just what works, right? So knowing that this is what we're looking for. Yeah, you guys don't want think this this stuff was working in like 1900s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, that's these are the kind of thrusts or, or general moves that uh, we're looking for. We don't want to press bets, but no, yeah, you can counter trade a little bit, but you're looking for that next press up to hammer short or that next press down to hammer long. Either way, as long as you're identifying the larger time frame, right? And if he were to zoom out on this spy chart, what's well, not really that bullish to be fair, right? No. Like it's really not. So a good, a good trade is to the south side for the most part. Yeah, you even have a distribution way up here too. Yeah, but you can break it down, always zooming out, right? Oh and yeah, then identify break everything that's... down. You can find yeah. the distribution accumulation in five minute to yeah. weekly, monthly. I mean, it doesn't matter. You cool. gotta find your time frames. Slow water, you suck. We'll have to get back to you because I got a jet <laughs> <laughs> for throwing a question in at three o'clock. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so Bruce, thank you, man. I totally appreciate you hanging and visiting. Yeah, um, I liked it. Yeah. So if you guys, you know, find him on Twitter, he's around, he's got a little group. If you want to learn more about Elliott waves, you know, Wyckoff fibs, all that kind of stuff, this is your man. Uh, I, I, by no means am I expert at it. Um, but I'll, I'll take what we've got today and also follow up with some, um, extra stuff. And we're going to start building this trading strategy, uh, using every one of these methods that we're, we're learning. Yeah, cool. let's get it. All right, man. Appreciate it, guys. All righty. Check, check you later. See ya.